Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three in your second series of the evening. This is the grand finals, a best of seven for the August monthly finals. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing in the color red as the English. It's Lucifer on seven. On the other side, Wham01 coming off from a fresh victory in game number two. He is going to be in command of the Holy Roman Empire in blue. All right, well, Holy Island is the map that we've got today for you guys. Uh, a definite fan favorite and a favorite of mine. I love this map. I love the way that it plays. I think, for me personally, I, I like Kawasan and I like this map. The, these these two have got to be my favorites. You just, it feels like there's just nonstop action on these maps. Exactly. I think among the hybrid maps, this is one of the most balanced ones because the front is so, so open and you really have to focus on both water and land at the same time. And it's not like I just wall up and always focus on water. It's not like I'm just going to go full land. It's a balance of the two, and that balance is very delicate. It also is dependent on the civilization matchup. So you have a lot of mind games in here, a lot of intricate details that you have to investigate or look into as you prep for specific matchups on this map. And I think it just makes it one of the most entertaining custom maps of the tournament. A little bit of an interesting deviation from what we saw earlier as well. In the last version of the map, the primary forest for the players had spawned at the rear of the base, meaning that the front was very open. However, on this version, the forest has spawned to the front for both players, meaning that it's somewhat closed off. Usually it spawns on the back, and I'm actually unsure whether this is a bug or a feature, Usually it's much more open indeed on the front. This is one of those generations where the two forests have spawned on the front. But generally it's a lot more open. Sometimes you see some forests spawn like close to that neutral market in the middle area. But this one, definitely a special generation. Very balanced it is. Look at the relic spawns, by the way. Once again, we're being six. blessed by six relics. Yes, yes. The, uh, the holy Adni has blessed us with the sixth relic today, an ultra holy island. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is great to see. So I suspect we're going to see plenty of battling over that island. We won't, unless there's a Donati around. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, or a Delhi perhaps, a Delhi pa player perhaps. But uh, all right, let, let's talk a little bit about strategy, about how we expect this game to unfold. So I don't think there's going to be anything too crazy with landmarks. I, I suspect we're going to be seeing the Arkham Chapel out of Wham. I suspect it's going to be the Council Hall out of Lucifron. When it comes to Castle Edge, do you think there's the potential for a Burgrave Palace on this map? It could come down to how much fish Vam still has left, which could possibly be dependent on how aggressive Lucifron is on water. I think if Vam has a good fishing eco plus the Arkham Chapel, that could easily warrant the Burgrave Palace. Then again, I think it's safer to just go for Knights if you really want to, because it's still an open map, despite the fact that you do have the forests on the front. And it's a map where the players are relatively far away from one another, especially with the forests blocking the way. So it would take some time for the infantry to arrive. And I feel like in the long run, you prefer knights over the English as compared to men at arms as well. So Burgrave Palace could play a role, but I think if Wham wants to play this one safe, it's going to be a direction of knights rather than infantry, at least at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I've got to agree with you. I, I think that knights make a lot of sense in this matchup, uh, at, at least to open with and then moving into something a little bit different. But... We'll watch and see how he plays it, as the age-up going to be coming through shortly. Uh, for both of these players, 190 gold in the bag for Lucifron. He's got plenty of fishing boats out. Take a look at this. Remember, one of, uh, one of the changes that happened to the English was that Admiralty uh, is now going to be giving the... Oh, oh, oh look at this Arkan. Whoa. Hello. Beauty. So Admiralty... It's a beauty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Admiralty was changed so that now the civilization bonus is the reduction cost for your, uh, your vessels... Whereas that uh, that extra bit of range is now an upgrade that you get from the dock. It used to be the other way around. So now it means that as the English, your fishing boats are cheaper. Which means that, you know, maybe you can keep an extra villager on food or something like that. Yeah, that's a massive boost indeed for the English. And it's not just the fishing ships that get the discount. It's also the combat vessels. So that becomes relevant once you start mass producing galleys. Once you start possibly even mass producing hulks. It's not a gigantic boost, but it's something that's consistent, reliable, and something that gives you a small edge over the opponent, which could increase over time, especially if both sides are investing heavily into water. 
Well, speaking of heavy investments, Wham is investing heavily on getting this Arkan up. Look how quick he's applying the uh, the villagers to the Arkan. There's so many villagers uh, that uh, that finish that one off, and five minutes into the game, that Arkan is completed. And now all the villagers turn their attention towards the uh, the gold and the wood. I suspect it's going to be double galley coming out for him shortly. Is it going to be double galley though? He's rushing up for the first galley and he likely will sally out to try and harass the enemy fishing ships. But we talked about this one. It's possible he doesn't want to spend much time in Feudal Age and he just wants to use that initial galley as the aggressor to buy him time to get to Castle. We shall see that in a second. All right. Well, let's take a look and see exactly. What, hold on. We've got we've got sales coming in from Lucifron. He's going for the heavy upgrade strategy. So to me, this signals the fact he wants to stay in H2 and fight it out in H2. Wham on the other side, he might is he thinking a little bit about an, an H3 potentially? It's looking like he might be heading in that direction. So. Not, still a fair a fair few villagers here on wood. Also dropping down the stable. So it might just be for a uh, a, a, a horseman or two. Yeah, he's probably going to pop out a horseman or two because you can expect a couple of longbows to hit you on land because it doesn't really cost much for the English. But yeah, it seems like he's thinking about Castle Age over here and it looks like his first galley is about to hit the fishing eco of Lucifron. Lucifron does have one galley to match it with. Yeah, the thing to remember when it comes to defending, it's a little bit like knights in that you can just ignore your enemy's galley and you can just look to yep. fight fire down upon their fishing boats and that's exactly what Wham was doing at least for the first few seconds. He quickly changed his mind though. Yeah obviously Lucifron does have the ship over there and oh look at that fake barracks out here for Lucifron. He definitely spotted the stable but decided not to go with the barracks for the time being instead focus on the water and he's got sails so he can outmaneuver the ships of Wham possibly even catch the weak ones as they are trying to flee. I like this opening. This this makes a lot of sense from Lucifron cancelling that barracks. So as long as he knows that Wham saw the barracks, that's a great investment for him because it's going to force him. Oh my lord! Now I'm just getting confused. So he's now now he's actually like, oh, uh, uh, maybe I should have made the barracks. Yeah, you he know didn't what? Have wood let's, for let's, ships, let's... probably. That's what I'm thinking. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps that was it. But we do now see Admiralty coming through for Lucifron. This is the unique upgrade that the English have access to. You can see right there, it gives an extra plus one range to all of their vessels. Uh, I suspect maybe even the fishing boats, perhaps. I'm starting to see the idea here for Lucifer, and this could be five head. With the extra range, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but with the extra range on the galleys, you outrange standard hawks. You know that the HRE wants to rush cost and go for hawks. You go for fast sails so you can outmaneuver him. You go for larger range. And the idea could be that he goes very heavy on the galleys and he's trying to pick off the Hawks from a distance, not letting him fire a single ballista shot. That could definitely be the strategy. Another strategy could just be luring the boar like he's done. But now one-shotting the uh, fishing boats down, doing a great job with it as well. Uh, so the Hawks have got a range of six, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that goes to seven uh, for the English. Uh, because we know that the uh, the war junks have got 6.5 and they sit safely in the middle there. But uh, yeah, that could be the case. So six range would be enough that the hulks wouldn't necessarily be able to all fire. Like they, they'd need to try and get a concave uh, to be able to fire effectively. They're not going to be able to do that spin to win because they will be out of range for the majority of their shots. But now once again, Lucifron looking to hunt. He's almost like a shark right now. Like, do, 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 do. Look at him just picking off the fishing boats. No trouble and at all. And look at that, that's where the sales come into play. This is so frustrating for Wham, because Wham just spent most of his resources going into Castle Age, and he can't really afford to go for sales right now, so his ships are slow. He can't really punish those incursions into his fishing eco, and look at that. Those are precious pieces of eco being picked off, now meaning that Lucifer is up by six eco over his opponent. First relic picked up, it's going to be that shoreline relic. Uh, second one, the central relic. Third one, it's going to be the closest relic. That is three relics in the bag now for Wham. That's a lot. Yeah, this is what I'm concerned about for Lucifron indeed. He's doing a good job picking off the fishing ships, but the HRA with the relics and the Arkan Chapel is going to be more than happy forfeiting that and just focusing on a land-based eco. So I'm not sure how big of a damage Lucifron is doing realistically here. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it, it, it almost feels like Wham may have sacrificed the water here. Uh, and l look how fast those galleys move. My lord, those are fast-moving galleys. With the, the additional sails together with the little pool trick there, 
That was great for him. But uh, I think the question is, where does Wham go from here? Because he's making a lot of men at arms. And it seems like, you know, Burgrave would have been a good investment. But obviously, when you're able to snag three relics like that, then it makes sense to be going for the Regnants. Indeed, he kind of needs a couple of men at arms here. Decided not to go for a Hulk, so the direction is clear. He doesn't want to fight water. In fact, just wants his opponent to commit more and more to this one. He only has two fishing ships left. He's going to forfeit his galleys and give up on the water. And this is where Lucifer needs to turn things on on land as well. Needs to realize that his opponent is bailing on water and he's about to get pushed on land. Yeah, and we can see that Lucifron has stopped making galleys at this point. He's sitting up on five and he said, that's enough, that's all I need. He's, he's completely just focused on land, and that's the correct decision here. Now looking to apply pressure, and the question is whether he thinks about going castle himself, or whether he just looks to try and play it out in the Feudal Age. He's got the longbows, which have got that extra little bit of damage so they can pierce through the armor, but uh, I don't know whether it's going to be enough once they start getting upgrades like, say, for example, their military... What's it called? Military drills? Marching drills, it is. But yeah, that's that's, that's what they're missing, actually. Yeah, but the Men at Arms is actually getting a pretty decent uh, connection. There's the marching drills coming through right now. In Age of Empires 3, it's called Military Drums. So that's that's the difference there. But look at him. He's, he's getting caught up, unfortunately. Standing a little bit too close to those barracks. So that's what Military Drums does in AoE Flee. So back when I played that game, I just always delayed my arsenal so late that I could afford all the text and just, I just clicked everything. So I never knew which does which. <laughs> Yes, it, it was a, it's a very good upgrade. Very good upgrade. But now we hear the fourth and the fifth relic being picked up by Wham01 at the moment. That's pretty decent. Five yep. relics ain't too bad, is it? Yeah, it's not bad. Monk might actually get picked off in the process, but in the end, Wham is going to be rewarded with five relics. And that more than offsets the eco advantage that Wham or Lucifron is supposed to have from the fish. Looks like Van actually wants to crawl back to water, or at least sink those ships with a couple of demolition ships, but this is the bigger problem for Lucifron. He's trying to go to Castle, but he's about to get pushed by men-at-arms, something he doesn't have a good response to. Yeah, and that's exactly it. How do you respond to that? Well, he's, he's able to hold for the moment. But keep in mind, at the same time, he's also taking down the Hulk. We did see a demo in queue. Looks like it's going to be able to come oh, here out here, goes. hopefully. Let's see if he's able to pick this one off in time. You can see him doing the retarget just there. He's waiting for it. He spots it immediately. <laughs> able to take it out before the blast hits. Oh, it hits the first of the galleys. But hey, that ain't too bad. And with that, he's able to clean that up completely. Yeah, indeed. Lucifer was paying attention to this one. In the meantime, Vam's slowly getting the upgrades in for the man but he's chasing standalone Spearman. It's not like he's diving in. He's giving precious time for Lucifron to reach Castle Age. And that could be Lucifron's way out of this one, because once he can mix in his own men at arms, or even better, some crossbowmen, that is going to swing things in the favor of Lucifron. And now he's also going to be playing on two DCs, thanks to the King's Palace. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think the question is, as this game goes later, which civilization do you favor? Do you favor the English? Do you favor the Holy Roman Empire? Because I definitely think there's a window for the Holy Roman Empire uh, to, to be quite strong. But my fear is that the English, with their Strelbora will eventually reach critical mass and will just be able to overwhelm the enemy uh, and uh, the Imperial Age will really start taking off. Yeah, the English is one of the civilizations that plays the longest games, if you look at the stats all across the ladder. So the English definitely want to drag this out long. In this intermediate period, there is definitely a window for the HRE and this is what Vam has to leverage. He's going to try to do so diving in under the town centers. Yeah, but there's so many longbows here. He's got the veterancy upgrade with the plus one ranged armor as well. It's going to be more than enough to hold on here. You can see over on the other side, Wham still yet to get plus one ranged armor for himself. Things starting to struggle. I just say ranged armor for Lucifer. I meant plus one ranged attack. He's going to be able to pierce that enemy armor just so effectively here. And now he's got the plus one through. Plus two going to be coming through for Wham. But uh, it definitely feels like uh, it might be a little bit too late though. Yeah, the problem for Wham that he's facing is that, as we discussed, men at arms are just slow. If he had Lancers, those would be able to do a lot more damage, like they're about to do right now on the gold mine. English, very slow army. They can't really catch up with these. They can chase the men at arms, but they can't chase the knights, and this is what Wham has to use. Yeah, looking to try and defend now. It does a pretty decent job of, uh, of repelling those units away, only losing a few villages. But uh, I think the big, the elephant in the room right now is those five relics that Wham's got. That's a yep. thousand gold a minute that he's coming in for him. That's, that that's ginormous. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. He's uh, mining we begin stone. to see a Look wall. He might even castle drop this. 
he might not want to drag this out. Oh, that this is smart. If he goes for a castle drop here, straight into into traps, with a mana arm holding, that, how do you even deal with that? I don't actually know how to deal with that, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, he's got plenty of resources in the bank. Mana arms are going to fight it out against the mana arms of his enemy. We do see armor Chad coming in for Lucifron, so he's looking to get that extra plus two armor. Uh, against his enemy, but uh, keep in mind he doesn't have too many of the other upgrades going for him at the moment. The town center is firing off towards those units. Longbow's on the backside, going to be able to help out as well. But now we see the knights looking to come in through and clean it up. Not a lot of units in here, but now the village is moving forward for Wham. He's looking to commit to a, ca a castle, but uh, at the same time, I I'd be a little bit scared about dropping this down. It it's going to get spotted immediately by Lucifer. Let's see if he rotates over towards that direction, and indeed he does immediately respond to it. He's like, that ain't that ain't going up. You get you get <laughs> out of here, my friend. And indeed he does get out of there very very quickly. The price to pay for Lucifer is massive, though. He's losing his army, and look at that, 20 plus idols for a long long time over here. He has to commit everything he has for this defense, and you see, he won't be able to ultimately stop the keep here from Wham. Just push it back a little bit more. Vam also lost tremendous units out there, but the map position he's in is pretty good. Castle, uh, it's gonna be close. Yeah, he's gonna try his best to delay it, but there's a lot of units moving forward for Wham. He's got plenty of production behind this. Keep in mind, he did lose water, so it means that his food production not gonna be as good as Lucifer's is. He's sitting up on 1200 at the moment, and a lot of that is gonna be fishing boats. He's got 69 villages at the moment, compared to Wham, he's only on 50. But uh, still, that, that uh, meta arm front is holding very effectively. But that keep is going to get up. Wham well, going to be able to begin building a foothold on this front line. Yeah, armor clad is in there now for English players. So Wham is desperately in the need of both two-ended weapons and heavy maces, more importantly. Two-ended weapons to make his infantry more optimized against the longbows and heavy maces to deal with the men at arms. He could also deviate a little bit more towards knights and once again use his mobility because he's got that strong point on the front now. So he could just start to stretch out the playing field. Although that's going to be a little bit more difficult now because Lucifron apparently walled off the entire northern side of the map, planning to wall off the south now as well. That is a very bold wall. Uh, let's take a look at on the north side and see if he actually got that wall completed. Now it's just going to be palisade walls, so nothing too crazy here. No stone walls, no... No, nothing special, but hey, it's still it's still honest work, isn't it? Yeah, and looks like Vam is gonna mirror his movement here. He's digging trenches too, and it looks like we could be in for a long game over here. Not something that you very commonly see on this map, especially with Vam piling up resources for Imperial Age. There goes his eco boom. He's going to catch up to the village account of Lucifer in the blink of an eye. Yeah, so it definitely did seem like he may have sacrificed water there. Uh, specifically to uh, to go for a bit of a, a quick Imperial. It definitely seemed like he wanted to end it in Castle Age, but very quickly realized it probably wasn't going to be possible. Water, to a certain extent, is a bait. We have to keep that in mind, because as the fishing ships have to take deeper or further and further away from the deep fish, it's going to get worse and worse. You see, this food income is giving Lucifer 1,300 per minute, and this is going to get even worse. On the other side, Vam is sitting on 1,500 now with farms. So at one point, you will have to transition to farms to a certain extent. And that is something that the HRE will be more than happy to do. So will the English be. The problem for Lucifer is that at one point, he's going to have to make a farm transition here. Not a hardcore farm transition, but at least a partial one. And that's a window that Vam could exploit. Yeah, yeah, definitely a good point. But we see that Swabia now coming up. Villagers trying to corner this knight. Not having a lot of luck with it, though. It manages to escape. Now the longbow is going to be called to back up and deal with this knight. Knight tries its best to take out one villager before it goes down. Unfortunately, not going to be successful. Wham reaches the Imperial Age. And now we immediately see elite knights come through. This could be an interesting opening here for Wham. If he just commits to 100% knights, goes elite knights, he could ferociously stomp his enemy here. And the key thing is that he's going to have access to bombards as well. So Lucifron will be forced to fight because if he doesn't, he's going to lose his landmarks in five seconds. Now, it looks like Vam isn't just going to go full knights over here. In fact, he's stacking into men at arms now with heavy maces as well. So his infantry is also going to be much better than what Lucifron has. And you get the feel that Lucifron is in trouble here because he would somehow need to squeeze out Imperial. But that right now is just distant dream to him. Well, he's got plenty of map control. So it means he's going to be able to continue taking food sources from around this map. We can see him moving out to the center for berries, moving out to the center for deer. He's having a great time, but now the trebuchets have started for Lucifront, so he's going to be looking to try and take down the keep of his enemy. No access to emergency repairs here in the center until he drops down a town center close by. 
Love Always going to be tower. a possibility for him. Love the tower from Lucifrom, by the way. He's going to extend his network of Cossus bonus to the trebuchet as well. And of course, the longbows and the man at arms. He's just afraid that they might be too far away from the town center to have that bonus. So he wants to ensure that he's going to have that when the fight comes in eventually. Because Ram right now is massing forces. He might even sacrifice the keep for the sake of building up his numbers, both in terms of eco with the pass of Schwabia, and both in terms of army with the man at arms and the lancers. Yeah, we'll have to watch and see. As he begins moving up towards the north, it doesn't look like an overchops come through, so he should be fine to hold that position. Yeah, it's just going to be a focus on those walls, and now we've got the longbows looking to fire from behind the safety of the trees. Indeed, going to be fortunate enough here to be able to be okay. Now more walls coming up at the front. He's done a decent job, and we've got repair repairs, uh, emergency repairs going to be coming through shortly. We can see the houses being extended out towards this forward position. Keep in mind... You're not allowed to use blueprints anymore to get the emergency repairs down. That has been banned. Uh, you're going to actually have to build the houses. And there they are. The houses have been completed. Do we see that emergency repairs coming through? Yeah, here it is. He already popped the repairs, so he's going to have that for the time being. He's up against two trebuchets, though, so he has to be careful because there might be enough firepower to take down the building, even with emergency repairs once it finishes. E-repairs has been changed. It has been nerfed a little bit recently, so it's not as strong as it used to be. Now for Wham, we begin to see that uh, Imperial Age siege coming through. It's going to be a bombard for him, as well as plenty of armored units. So many armored units, in fact. Now looking to try and break through here. The Knight's going to be able to charge out. And now the Maces, or rather the, the Men at Arms with their heavy Maces, looking to try and take down the Men at Arms of his enemy. Numbers here looking ferocious right now for Wham. Lucifer going to be trying to defend the surround coming through. Men at Arms going to be tanking up the front line, but the Elite Knights get that extra armor from the Elite upgrade. It's going to make it extra difficult for those longbows on the backside to penetrate. We don't see any crossbows coming out from Lucifron yet. Trebuchet is still trying to fire down at the units below it, but the defense is looking relatively good for Lucifron. It's always hard to tell when it comes to situations like this, but Litacor, it looks like he might be able to hold for the moment. Yeah, it's quality over quantity right now. The numbers, they were just not there for Wham, and you see the bleeding hole that Lucifron had, that has been plugged in. So reinforcements can't really come in for Wham, and now crossbows are making an appearance. Network of castles paying for his price really well over here for Lucifron. He wants to go into Imperial, and I think he might have bought himself just enough time to do so. Also managed to take down the keep on the front line, but here comes the next wave. Can he stop this Aussie? That is a lot of units coming through. He's going for the wind guard of all landmarks here. Just when you thought the only thing he needed to do was hold, it is not going to be the case. He's going to be looking to go for the wind guard palace instead of it for was. that uh, bar bark. It could be palace. denied. It could be denied, oh, Aussie. It doesn't look like he's picked it up just yet. It looks like it will get up. There's more than 20 villages on this bad boy. And indeed, it does get up. And now underneath the town center, the Imperial Age comes through. But at what cost? It may be too late. Have we got crossbows coming out just yet? It looks like we've got 12 crossbows out now. So it does look like Lucifron has diversified from those longbows into crossbows. So definitely the right choice. And he's continuing to kite back. He's got himself a nice little pocket back here. Should be able to hold on for the moment, though. But that's not sufficient because there is that the bombard is, crawling yeah. up and he calls it. <laughs> Never mind, not able to hold. He says, I'm just going to tap out. The bombard must have been too much. You also had a culverin coming out there as well. Wham was really looking to seal the deal and takes the third game in this series. What a game, really. It seemed like Lucifer was going to be able to stabilize, but then again, next wave comes in for Wham and... It really was at Imperial Age time that Wham nailed, and that forward castle just gave him just enough buffer to get up to uh, Imperial, and then immediately win the game. Yeah, impressive stuff from Wham, giving away the water, going, I'm not going to say fast imp, but he went pretty quick on the imp there. It did seem like he wanted to end it in the Castle Age, obviously realized that he couldn't do that, grabbed five relics, that was super schmick. And managed to finish in Imperial. There was just really no way Lucifron was going to hold that. It felt like a really big delay before he got to crossbows there. Had he gone to crossbows a bit earlier, perhaps he would have been able to hold a bit more efficiently, survive a little bit longer, and not been able to tap out. But unfortunately for him, he does indeed tap out. And we move on to game number four in this Best of Seven series. All right. Well, I think it might be time for some... Breakfast pizza delivery at 7 a.m. for me, Litacore. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling ready. How about you? 
Wait, guys, I just realized Ludacor sent me a message. He said, be right back. So I'm just talking to myself. I'm talking to you guys. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys enjoy enjoying the action so far? I tell you what, this has been a good series. It's It's gone a lot of different ways. I thought Lucifron was holding that little attack. Goyvenheim saying, I'm ready for the breakfast pizza. What toppings? If you were doing a breakfast pizza, you'd do like... Imagine like an English breakfast and then just put it on a pizza. So egg, baked beans, mushroom. <laughs> this is disgusting. Who decided that we we're going to have an, a, a breakfast pizza like this? Uh, but I reckon you could make a pretty good one. Like, okay, uh, sausage, bacon, ham. And eggs. <laughs> oh, eggs. Hey.